How we doing, gang? Hi. Good, good food. <laughs> um, we had a practice today, uh, getting ready for the the match this week. Um, you know, recapping the game, uh, the thing that hurt us defensively was we 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 had them in good positions for getting some stops, and I think penalties uh, really got opportunities for them to extend drives. You know, we got to be better about you know attacking quarterbacks like this. Um, three other things we had a. A couple roughing the passer, we had a face mask, we had a, you know, we had a hitting the helmet, that type of thing, hitting against quarterbacks. That's, you know, particularly when you do those things on third down, it's not, that's not going to give us any um, positive momentum. Uh, a couple of those things, when that, when those things did happen, it, it, it usually resulted to points, and and that's something I know we can be better at defensively, offensively. You know, there were some some moments of of good production. Uh, I liked how we came out at halftime and, and, and went down this field and scored, and it was a good, efficient drive. Um, I think Brendan, a couple times in the pocket, stayed in there against some heavy pressure on third down and hit a couple of third down conversions, which is a, uh, something that he's improved on. Um, we just got to continue to keep the progress of, of moving forward on the offensive side of the ball. And it was good to see that the running game came alive a little bit, you know, which is something that we need to have happen and we need to work on the other facets of our offense uh, to give us a chance to be uh, more productive you know, in that area. I think the area that was a little bit surprising to me, we're usually pretty solid with, is special teams. Um, we had a blocked field goal kick uh, in the first attempt. Uh, that's not usually something that we, we take a great deal of pride with in, in, in working through our special teams. And that happened in the first, first field goal attempt. Uh, on a positive note, Cole Becker got his first two kicks in terms of points um, that he was able to convert you know, after that fact, which was a good thing. And then I would say the other part that I, I was a little bit disappointed is with, with our coverage units. We know that they had a dynamic returner uh, that has a, you know, has ability to, to break it from any you know, standpoint on any area of the field. And he did get a couple of returns, good returns against us that you know, we need to get short up. So um, just recapping the game of things we need to fix. Um, on a brighter note, Mustafa Johnson's back. You know he's able to play this week, uh, so that's a that's a good positive note. But on the defensive side, um, I think that's about it. Open up for questions. Start with defensive line. Um, two things is as you sat down, I saw Lloyd Murray um, announce he's going to the transfer portal. Um, curious if there's if he's the only one at this point, and do you worry about losing more players? Um, as the season, if it's it hard to say. Like you know, it's hard to say. That's kind of a case by case scenario. Um, you know, Lloyd's case may not affect anybody else's case, and his is unique. You know, his reasons for leaving. So, um, but that's usually that's their own personal case by case scenarios dealing with, you know, their their own situations. But um, that's part of that's going to happen. And that's going to happen. That's going to be the part of college football. Until we we say it's no more, no portal anymore, it's it's going to be around. That's just the nature of the business now. And then just a follow up on Mustafa, how excited are you to have him back? And what do you think like he can bring to the table? Does he does he look like the same type of player that he was last year? He looks like a, a very good player. He gives us a veteran presence, you know, in the defensive front. Um, he's excited to play. Obviously, he feels like he's got a, you know, he's it was a blessing on his part to get another opportunity to play. Um, so I, I think he'll he'll make the most of it, but he'll he'll be a good veteran piece for us defensively. That you know I think will really help us, uh, you know, solidify what we need to do. Coach, what's the morale like within the team, and and you know with USC coming in here, a program that that you guys hadn't beaten before, is that kind mm -hmm. of a carrot that that you dangle in front of the players this week? I think if there's anything and everything right now that we're trying to dangle to get ourselves to play uh, better football week after week, um, you know, what I'm asking and stressing with these guys is being consistent about improving each week uh, and shoring up the issues that do come up from time to time, you know, per week and per game and with the situations that come up. And, you know, I've been through this before. Uh, and we've come out of it pretty well on the other end, but it's, there's no skipping steps to the process of really building your foundation the right way. Um, 
you know, there's things that we need to fix, definitely. And there's things that we need to grow and mature with, you know, with some of our youth. But there's, uh, I think the morale's still pretty good. You know, it's still pretty good. You know, they want to win. They want to be successful. They see opportunities in front of them. And uh, we'll, keep, we'll keep pressing forward. And you know, that's what we'll do. So we were talking about Josh Watts last week. He's having a, a great season, and uh, I thought he punted well again the other night. On the flip side of that, you guys are giving up a lot of punt return yards. How much of that is your coverage, and how much is it, you know, Josh, maybe the next step for him is learning how to directional punt and kind of get it away from the returners? It's more coverage related. And I mentioned that, you know, in my opening statement, how, you know, we let so many yards get out, you know, in, in our coverage, and we've been pretty good at that, you know, for the start of the season. So we have to get better at, um, you know, getting off of our, you know, assignments with uh, these guys that try to hold us up and get downfield. They are vicing, or when I mean vicing, that's talking about double teaming the gunners outside. That's how they, you know, that's kind of how most teams will try to neutralize the first guy getting down at the returner. So they do a little bit of that. Um, and that's, you know, that's something that's going to always occur. But the interior part of the coverage has to continue to get better. And that's where we, we, we need to make sure that we, uh, we can't just rely on our gunners to make those plays. We've got to get the interior of the coverage, you know, being able to expand and do what it's supposed to do. Ty Robinson caught his first pass a couple weeks ago, had a big play against Arizona State. What have you seen out of his development uh, in terms of him being a, a contributor for you guys now? He's been a pleasant, uh, you know, youthful surprise. You know, he and, um, you know, Chase Penry, you know, both those guys are, are factors in what we're doing offensively. Um, they're, in, you know, they're in the rotation. Um, we have a lot of confidence in both of them. And Ty, you know, he's he's made a, a few plays. You know, he had a nice play in the game, and but he also dropped the third down pass that it wasn't perfect, but you know, he's got to make. So he's, you know, that's part of the growing process with a young player. Um, but he's definitely uh, we're we're excited about what his future looks like, and he's already helping us, and he's getting better week after week. So we we hope to continue that progress. Yes, ma'am. Um, what do you see from USC? What, um, in the beginning, and what are you expecting to see from them this coming up with uh, the, the kind of turmoil they've had, the changes they've had? And then from what you see from game film, what do you expect? I think these guys are really still playing pretty hard. You know, they're dealing with their own issues, uh, obviously, in their program, and, you know, just like we're dealing with ours. But they're still being very competitive and, and working hard. And, you know, there's excitement I see on the sideline when you watch, uh, watch the footage of them on the sideline and they're supporting their teammates that are playing. So, you know, I, you know from what I stand, from what I can see from the video and the film that we were studying, they're, you know, they're playing hard and they're trying to, they're trying to win games too. So, um, you know, so they're, they're, they're dealing with a lot of stuff like, like most people. But, you know, I think they're playing still pretty hard. game like this where both teams might have some wounds that they're trying to deal with, how important or how much more important does a team's mindset have in this kind of game where they're not feeling like, oh, woe is us, and they have that proper mindset? You know, that's, those are all the things that most young people deal with with any adversity, right? You know, all of us go through adversity in moments of our lives, and, you know, we, whoever deals with it the best in terms of having the best you know, solution, you know, in their own personal way to, to, to get through it, you know, those are the ones that usually can recover the fastest. And, you know, we, we've talked about ours, you know, quite a bit. You know, we don't sugarcoat anything. We don't make excuses for anything. Um, you know, we have a team that we have that's, that's fielded to play every week, and there's expectations that we expect to have, you know, each and every week. And, you know, sometimes they get met, sometimes they don't. But, you know, I think we're, we're at that point where we're, we need to continue the progress and push forward offensively, in which I thought there were some steps of progress there. And then defensively, we got to play smarter. You know, there's some things that really caught us in this game, this past game with the penalties that really extended drives and put points on the board. So there's still a lot of stuff that we need to shore up, <laughs> you know, in every area. We talked about the special teams woes too. Um, but you know, we we really go through these moments in time when I when I talk with the team. It's it's part of life. You know, you're not gonna it's not gonna be a, a bed of roses where everything's gonna be smooth sailing and everybody's feeling great and you're undefeated and all that. There's gonna be some things you got to work through. I call it trial by fire. You know, you're gonna have to do that, and it makes you a better person, player, 
uh, it, that experience going through it, it makes you a whole lot better the next time something like that happens. So um, we're going through it, but you know we're we're optimistic, or we got a good attitude, like was mentioned with with you know over here with Adam, but but we feel good. You know we're going to keep pushing forward. The, the season's still young. There's still a lot to play for, and uh, and it starts this week. Do you ever toy with things like triple option? Do you think about wishbone? Um, Ooh. I've, I've seen a lot of those. <laughs> I mean, you know, that's you kind know. of, that's in a way, you know, what you're referring to is really what most of these spread systems are. It is, they are triple option plays. You know, you, for example, instead of having the, the fullback and the two wingbacks, you know, you know in, in the backfield, whether they're on the edges or in the backfield, um, you know, there's a fake, there's reading an edge player, there's whether to give it or dish it. You know, you're seeing really triple option football in spread sense now in today's football. And it's just done a different way. There's bubble screens on the perimeter that gives you to your outside edges. There's reading the edge, whether to take it or give it. You know, every offense has a, a level of triple option play. Um, you know, Brendan Lewis, you know, uh, He's he's done a few of those in his, in his previous game, you know, this this week where he had a couple big plays, uh, and you see it every you know almost every Saturday, you know, you see it. It's being involved every Saturday. Um, so yes, we we do have a lot of those types of things, um, and we'll continue to to do the things that that I think we that are more fitting our personnel, you know, better as as, as we go. You know, you notice in the second half, I thought our, our run game was a little bit more consistent, you know, in the second half of the game. You know, so we're, we're figuring out what our players do best, what they know best, what they adjust to best to be effective. So we, we believe me, we're, we're scratching the surface on a lot of different things out there. When you said triple option, we do that. But that's yeah. kind of what the wishbone is. Yeah, just, but not the wishbone. No, no. But now, we do have Darian Hagan who could probably do a little bit of that for us. Um, yeah, no eligibility, yeah. I think his, his eligibility has expired. Carl, I know you've got so much on your plate to worry about with 115 players or whatever it is, but uh, what would you say to a frustrated fan base to keep them buying into your program right now? There's a process, you know, there's a process that goes, that goes with it. And I think sometimes, you know, we're, we were all hoping that the extension of what happened last in the shortened season was going to be the extension for this season. But, you know, there's that, there's that uh, you know, thing that we say that, you know, each team in each year is different. You know, it's, you, sometimes you, you acquire new pieces and you lose pieces. You know, so some of those, um, you know, were, were useful in some areas that, that I think were, we, were had, we had some experience in last year. But I would say for our fan base is just to, just to hang in there. You know, the goal for us is to, to, is to continue to improve, you know, and to build this team the right way and to build it with a really solid foundation. Um, there's no skipping steps for doing that. Uh, and a lot of the time, you know, when you try to do that, it ends up making it even more of a difficulty than, than, than what you're really trying to build within your program. But I would tell you this, that the foundation is pretty close. Um, we're not that far away from being very successful. It's going to take some hard work from the coaches and the players to get there. Uh, I've been through this before, <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm relying on that, on my experience from being in those situations before. But I get it. You know, we're we're just as frustrated as our fan base, and our players are too. So I don't want our I don't want our fan base to get disappointed to the fact that they think that our players are numb to the process. Believe me, they, they want everybody to be excited about who they are and what they're doing. So don't, don't give that, uh, I hope that that's not the impression that anybody, that when you hear these interviews and people are talking about, you know, how we're not frustrated. Believe me, we're extremely frustrated. But I also know that there's, there's, uh, there's success down the line here. And there's hope and belief and hard work that's going to get us to where we need to get to. And it's just going through a process of time and who knows how long that'll take, but it, that's definitely what we're dealing with right now. Okay, we'll take a quick look at the Zoom. Right. Troy, anything on the Zoom? 
We have, we have two. We have two questions. Um, first, we've got Pat Graham from the AP, and then we'll follow it up with Pat Rooney from the Boulder Daily Camera. Pat Graham, if you want to go ahead. Hey, Coach. Thanks for taking the time. Really appreciate it. Hey, uh, two parter here. I just want to just curious. How do you keep Brennan's confidence high through this rough patch, and how do you prevent maybe bad habits from creeping in? Well, we're scrutinizing every single detail as you can imagine uh, of 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 developing his prog progression, you know, week after week. So we're not letting any bad habits <laughs> enter into the, the equation. We're trying to eliminate the bad and, and to build on the things that, that require for him to be successful. So I think the bad habits are easy to fix, you know, because those are the things we're scrutinizing on a daily basis. It's, it's really being productive with the good training and development that he's getting uh, and making and seeing the progress, you know, that he sees the progress in that too. So, you know, you notice and there was a couple third downs in the game that we converted where he took it on the chin and sometimes learning as a quarterback to, to deliver an accurate pass, knowing that you're going to get hit on the chin is that's part of the job, so to speak. So he's learning a little bit about that process about being in the pocket. And he's learning outside of the pocket that he has to protect himself too, protect himself, you know, and he's out running too. So we don't expect him to run, up, run around or run through people. And, you know, he's got to be more protective of him and sliding and, and, you know, getting to the next play too. So he's learning a lot of really good things right now. So we are eliminating the, 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 bad, the bad issues and, and really trying to build on the good. Did I answer that for you? You sure did. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Hey, Pat Rooney. Hey, Carl. I uh, wanted to ask something quickly about uh, your, your defense um, overall this season. Obviously, they've been on the field a lot, but have uh, still done some good things. Maybe one thing we haven't seen is a lot of uh, big impact plays, uh, plays behind the line of scrimmage, uh, causing turnovers. I guess going forward, uh, in general, is there anything you can put your finger on on, on what needs to happen to, to maybe see a little more of that? Well, you, you probably, the, neg the negation of what happened in the game is that we had a couple of plays in the backfield on the quarterback this last game that were negated because of a personal foul penalty. So we've had like that, the sack opportunity and, you know, things like that. So we are, you know, we're trying to do the things in a correct manner. I think the, our defense has done some, hit their body of work on, for the most part has been more positive than negative. But the negatives that are killing us right now are the penalties. And um, we got to continue to fix a lot of things from a, relating the front and coverage issues with our linebackers and our secondary. I mean, that's the other part that I think was, was a little bit uh, lacking in this, in this previous game. But I would say their body of work has been mostly on the positive side. It really has been. And I, I believe you know, we, we're doing the right things defensively. We just have to really tighten down the screws and maybe even minimize the packages some so that everybody knows how to make the right adjustments. Is that good on the Zoom, Troy? We got one uh, more. Else? Sorry. No, I think we're good on the Zoom. Thank you. OK, All Brian right. has one Thank more, you. Coach. Sorry, Brian has one more. I want to ask you, this week you got uh, Katie Nixon coming back. I know you only had him here one year, but you mentioned a lot about his leadership while he was here. Kind of what did he mean to the program? And you know, how weird is it going to be to see him on the other side? There'll probably be more common with the transfer portal. You got another one coming later on this season, but um, will it be weird to see him on that other side? Not really. Uh, like I said, is this the college portal and guys going to get a chance to play for a, your your own conference teams? that you're competing against is much like the, you know, the professional level when guys um, sign with another team in free agency and, and they end up playing with them. So it's, it's an experience that I'm very familiar with, you know, but what KD has been for us, you know, even though I only had him for a short period of time, you know, I know that he had uh, some strong leadership qualities that I thought, uh, you know, our, our team a year ago, because he missed most of the season a year ago with his, with his uh, hamstring. And, but he was always really positive with our, with the, you know, his teammates, particularly his position group, was keeping them going. And, and even though he wasn't, you know, as big a factor in the season, but you know, those are the things that I think is, you know, we're, we were missing a little bit from this year's team because of the youthfulness of this team. But that was one of the pieces that I think KD was able to give some some leadership qualities to our team from a year ago. All right. Thanks, Thank Coach. you.